Though I've never played them, I've always really loved the art direction and worlds of the From Software games. Dark Souls, Bloodborne, Sekiro, Elden Ring. Each is a weird, twisted world, dark and far past its golden age. It's a stark contrast to the Stormcast, which represent Age of Sigmar's new, more noble bright aesthetic than the old Warhammer fantasy. So I thought, could I try to bring some of that Dark Souls flavor, that Elden Ring flavor to the Stormcast? As a base, I'm using the leader from the Steelheart's Champion trio of Stormcast. He's an interesting choice to make as I kind of hate how he looks. He has a weirdly short torso and I kind of hate his face. All three of the Steelheart champions are snap fit, so I just pried apart the big guy with my knife. Doing so, you can see here just how weird his proportions are, and how tiny his torso is. I started off by doing what I do to all of my Stormcast conversions, which is snipping off their pauldrons. I hate them, and I think they are by far the worst aspect of their armor. In this case, it was a little difficult because the pauldron is directly casted onto his arm instead of being a separate piece. My second least favorite aspect of the Stormcast is their weird Roman skirts, and so that one I just shaved down. I would later have to find something else to cover it, but I wasn't too worried. I like using chainmail generally for this portion, um, because I think it gives the Stormcast a little bit grittier of a look, and gritty is the name of the game when you're trying to convert something to look like the From Software games. I don't hate the stylized muscled chests of the Stormcast armor, but they're also not my favorite element by far, so I decided that I would try to replace this one with the chest plate from a Chaos Warrior or Chaos Chosen, I'm not sure which. It's roughly the correct proportions and I thought it would give him more of a barrel chested tough look. Instead of trying to match the breastplate to the front, I simply separated torso from waist. I then separated arms from torso and armored half tabard as well. Using the existing pole in the center of the storm cast, I glued the new torso in place. I don't love this sword and the way it's held, but I figured I could still make it grim dark if I replaced the sword with something a little less shiny and noble bright, and for that I had a few different options. First is this mace from the Chaos Knights kit. I really liked the idea of him just holding it, it has this kind of spiked ancient look to it, which is what I was going for with the Dark Souls aesthetic. Not chaosy, but still kind of nasty. Second up was this sword from the Putrid Blight Kings kit. It has this really ancient kind of look to it, broken and rusted and kind of archaic, but it's too small, so I of course casted it and made it double in size. I was really stuck between the two options, but as you'll see in a minute, the question became kind of moot. The Chaos Knight torso had been working okay, but I didn't love it, so I decided to replace it with this one. This is a casting of one of the Inquisitorial kits. I don't remember what it's called at the moment, but I had, just like the sword, cast it and grew it in size, so it was about double, and I really liked the feel of it. It looks very kind of ancient in its angles and a little bit gothic without being chaos -y. For the non-sword arm of the Stormcast, I decided to replace it with this one from the Silas Beastbane kit. It's a grisly trophy, and I thought it would match the Dark Souls aesthetic really well. Instead of gluing the arm at the shoulder, I actually glued the head to the leg. This was because I was pretty sure I was going to need to widen the shoulders of my Stormcast and didn't want to have to worry about ruining the connection point. I added some tattered chainmail to the front of my Stormcast, but it didn't cover entirely the blank portions left by cutting off the Roman skirt, so I experimented with some tassets he could use. This one is actually the shoulder plate from a Putrid Blight King, and this one the hip plate from a Chaos Knight. This is the elbow armor from the Putrid Blight King's kit. It's kind of pointed in this very archaic aged armor way, kind of as though it's from the Dark Ages. So what I did is I shaved down the knee pad of my Stormcast and glued it over to give the armor a little bit more of an angular ancient feel. I liked how it looked so much that I then went and did it to the other knee. It was time to add back my Stormcast sword arm, but as I looked at it, I really didn't love how it was looking. It still just looked a little too heroic. So I decided to replace it with this other Stormcast arm, a little lower angle. I, for some reason, just like this stance more and I find myself gravitating to it in almost all of my conversions. Now that the angle was different, none of the ginormous weapons I'd tried before would work. So I tried out a few other ones. This is again the Future Blight King's kit sword. I still liked it, it still look, would have looked good, but there are some other options. This is a double-sided act from the Putrid Blight King's kit. I thought a big, hefty weapon would at least explain how he'd hacked off the Minotaur's head better than a sword. I did end up going with an axe, but funnily enough, not that one. Instead, I went with this one from the Beastman Bestigore kit. It has a really weird gothic look to it that isn't quite chaosy. again, like most of his armor, 
and I really liked that. You won't see it for a while though because I went with the two-headed axe for a little bit. I'd use wire and green stuff to create an arm for the minotaur one, and over it I put another Nurgle kit pauldron, this one from the worm spat. A lot of the putrid blight kings and Nurgle armor in general has a very archaic weathered feel to it that could be repurposed without being explicitly chaosy, and I found those aspects really useful for these conversions. Case in point, his other pauldron was yet again another putrid blight king's pauldron. This time it was the skull that really sold me on it. It looks archaic, as though it was from some kind of a tomb. The Stormcast arm had been a good idea, but it wasn't exactly the right angle, so I went in and replaced it with, you guessed it, a Putrid Blight King's one. To continue Grim Darkifying him, to his back I strapped on a small shield from the Bestigore kit. It looks like some kind of a strange trophy, as though he had been murdering beastmen and taken two of their horns for his own. It's kind of savage, and I kind of love the flair it adds to him. The last element to complete my Dark Souls Stormcast was to give him a head. From the beginning, I knew I wanted to use this one from the Putrid Blight King's kit. I felt like it would really solidify his dark, pagan, forest god look, as though he was some strange, eldritch creature stalking through the forest, killing beastmen. But unfortunately, it was kind of tiny by the time I had put it on him. What I hadn't realized was that all of his armor had bulked him up considerably from what I had initially envisioned, and now the head just looked too small, even with its antlers. I switched it for a different Blight King's head, this time with larger antlers, and that kind of helped. It's still a little too small, but I do think there's something a little creepy about that. I eventually swapped it back for the helm before, but this time with some of the antlers cut down. And with that, my Dark Souls inspired Stormcast was ready to take the field. In all, I'm really pleased with how he turned out. Small head problems and all. In the end, all I really ended up using of the original Stormcast was the legs and billowing cape, but I think that works pretty well. To me, he really does feel like some tall, gaunt forest creature that stalks between the trees, hunting beastmen and hacking them apart. Not a noble bright Stormcast, but something different, darker, grimmer. My video on converting the two other Stormcasts from the Steelhearts Champion kit will go up next week or the week after, so if you're interested in seeing that when it comes out, hit subscribe. Also hit the like button while you're at it, and check out some of my other conversions. Thanks for watching.